Hey guys, Steve here. Well, welcome to my YouTube channel. I've got another video today, and it's on this place here. Mana Pata, or Mana Puta. It's another one of those names I can't pronounce. Um, it was completed in 1912. We were just looking at the plaque over there a minute ago. We're gonna have a little walk around. We're gonna go down and show you the tunnel. There's two ways to go. You can go down that end, or down this end here. This way down here is a little bit better because you can walk up into the tunnel. The other end, you can't go as far. There's a few steps down that way, so if you don't like walking down steps, go that way. Really wet here today because we've had a lot of rain. As we're camping, it always rains, but uh, let's head in here now and we'll have a look around. Just follow me, guys. So there's no, there's no camping in here at all. Um, you're not allowed to camp down here, no, not even overnight or anything, but you can come down here. There's um, gas barbecues. There's a little plaque here. I'll put a photo up on the screen and uh, tells you all about it when it was open, tells you some of, of some of the history about here. Uh, there's another park over, over there just from the Queensland Government and uh, the Regional Council, just uh, all the work they've done here. There is a pit toilet over there, so if you want to need to go to the toilet, you have got toilet facilities. And then up here, you've got Great little covered um, picnic tables. They're all concrete, so they're not gonna have to worry about them falling apart. And you've got a gas barbecue, which has been provided by the council. Now everything around here looks like it's kept really good. We were talking to the owners of where we're staying down there, and they did say they've had a lot of trouble with vandals and that up here over the past. So I think it is patrolled pretty regularly. So make sure you don't camp down here, but you're quite welcome to come down here, cook up a barbecue, have a picnic, whatever, and check out the tunnel. Great little spot. Um, can't wait to show you down there and go for a walk down there and show you the tunnel. But uh, we'll head up to the uh, other part of the tunnel up here now, and uh, we'll show you some of the some old relics of um, history there. Like uh, I think there's a part of an old baker house and the old schoolyard. Uh, there's another picnic table over there, and also when you walk down to this part down here. If you follow the track down there, there's a little viewing platform that you can see the tunnel. We might even head down there and have a look. And there's a sign down there with all the literature. So we'll head up here now and we'll have a look up here and then we'll head down to this part of the tunnel down here. Okay guys, this is the first little bit of uh, leftover, a bit of history. Um, all that remains is a few stumps in the ground, but they've built a barrier around it just to represent where it was. So this is uh, the uh, Manapucha, railway camp. Uh, tents camps were, uh, and for surveyors, railways, workers, um, over a hundred men stayed here over the uh, 13 months or more that, that it took to build the tunnel. So this is part of where they camped. And up the top up here, there's, there's not much left up there, but they have put a um, surveyors thing around it just to show you this is where the school was because a lot of these workers would have had their families with them. They would have all been camping up here. It's not far from the town of Kuya, so they might have even went down to the pub there. But uh, you can see uh, a bit of a photograph of the uh, school there and all the people all dressed up, uh, standing out the front of it. So this is where the schoolhouse was located. Uh, I think there's just about three or four stumps left on the ground from the original building there. So you can see them all sort of sticking up out of the ground there, but they would have been where the school was. It's a shame the buildings aren't still here, but um, they're probably damaged or moved away. And over there a little bit further, we'll go over there now and I'll show you the old bake house. Cheers guys. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe too. And uh, if you've got any comments, leave them down below. Cheers. Okay guys. Here's the other bakehouse I was telling you about. So this is uh, the bakehouse was typically placed where the bread was baked in the bakery for uh, the early pioneers. Um, it was a rock or a stone oven um, and they baked all the uh, food that they may have needed for the uh, workers and the campsites at night. And all that's basically left is a few concrete blocks of probably the original oven. So they used some of the local rocks to build the oven. You can see them um, inside the concrete there that they've made up and it looks like uh, part of the chimney in the back there. It wasn't very big, but it probably uh, suited their purposes at the time. So this is the track here that leads down to one end of the tunnel. Now this end of the tunnel here 
Um, you can't walk far up because there is native bats in it. We're not going to go down there now because a heap of people just turned up and I think they're heading down that way. So we might head down the other end first and then we'll come back down here and show you down here and finish up. So cheers guys. We'll show you some more down on the other end of the tunnel in a minute. We were just up at the other end of the tunnel there. You can see all the people up there I was talking about going to head down there now. But uh, here's the sign that tells you all the history about the railway tunnel when it was built, how long it is, 287 metres. Um, back in 1911, I think it was start, they considered digging it and it was finished uh, in 2000, 2000, in 1913. So they done uh, pretty well to get it all done. And it's got all the uh, costs there, uh, 225,000 pounds. So that was a fair bit of money back then. And uh, you can see all the workers there old horses and uh, it was all hand dug and you can see all the blokes there that were digging it so all concreted out absolutely uh, amazing to see and there's one of the old steam trains going through it so we're going to head down to this end of the tunnel now we'll just head over there and uh, we'll show you your first glimpse of it so you know, thanks very much guys and uh, when I come back, I'll just quickly go over to the viewing platform before we head back over the other side and show you down over there. Jeez. So you've got a little walking track here. You can see the sign up there. About a one kilometre round trip. Little gate here you just got to go through. So we've just come down from where we were there a minute ago. So we'll head down here now. Yes, yeah, so a beautiful little spot around here. We're really interested to uh, have a look at this tunnel. Apparently it's one of the, uh, like I was saying up there earlier, it's one of the longest uh, man-made dugout tunnel in Australia or Queensland? Yeah. Huh? Australia. In Australia, so it's just down there. So the tunnel entrance or exit is just over there. There is a viewing platform. We'll go over there when we come back and have a look over there. So we'll show you when we get a bit closer down the bottom here. Okay guys, we've just walked down from the track up here from the top there. Now you can see the road there, that comes from the park up there. So if you drive down there and you don't want to walk that little bit of track, you can drive down to here, park there and walk through here. As you can see, it's fairly wet because we're camping and as you know, it always rains when we're camping. So I'll tell you what, where we were camped last night, check out my video on that. But uh, it was probably one of the worst nights we've had camping in a long time. And it was only because we got there late and uh, we didn't really get set up properly. Tea was late. We didn't have everything up and running how we normally like it. But uh, we've got it fixed up this morning and uh, thankfully it's not raining now. It's pretty windy and overcast but uh, bloody good. So you can see now we're walking along the old railway line. None of the railway line's still here but you've got beautiful walking track. Look at all the beautiful moss and that growing over the rocks there. All the moisture coming through. So if you like a little bit of history a little bit of bush this is a place to come so it's just off uh, the main highway to Toowoomba you've got to turn off and uh, either come through Kumbunji or head down towards Kuya and you'll see the turn off but uh, really beautiful look at the little water cascading there off the side of the rock there So we're just about at the tunnel now. You can see all the uh, rock. And he's just saying something nice down there. It's a fair bit of water on the ground here, so. So it's, yeah, really, really nice. And uh, I don't think it's a spot that's really well known. I haven't seen 
too much on uh, YouTube about it or Facebook. But uh, here we are here. So you can see the main sort of wall there that they put up to where the railway tunnel starts. I'll head up here now. So there's the entrance there. It looks like it might be uh, blocked off halfway through, so. Um, I was reading on Wikitex because of um, the bats. Okay, the, you can't go all the way through because of the bats that live in here. Micro bats. So it's not like some of the ones in Queensland. Now this one has all been dug out and concreted, unlike the one at, um, the name that I can never pronounce on my other clip, you know, I might put a link up on the uh, top corner of the screen up there to that video. So you can check that one out on another railway tunnel. But uh, Baluyi or tunnel, we actually drove through that in our car. So they've got a sign there about protecting the uh, bats there, so I'll just get a bit closer. So you can see it's uh, all concreted. It's, it's, a, it's a lot bigger than the other tunnel we went to. It's four and a half metres wide and five metres tall. So four, four and a half metres wide and five metres tall. And I think it's one of the longest spans. What was it? Uh, 287 metres as a bore tunnel. Yeah, so 287 metres as a bore tunnel. And you can still see up on the roof there all the soot from the steam train. So how cool is that? So absolutely fantastic. Like uh, any tunnel, there's a little bit of water seepage. Not a lot though, it's uh, only mainly seeping down at the end here. Looks fairly dry through the middle. And uh, they did tell us there is a little bit of graffiti in here that uh, people can't help themselves. Yeah, so any was just saying elevation 640 metres, so we're actually, this is the great part of the Great Dividing Range, isn't it? Yeah, so one end of, the lady was saying, one end of the water, oh, travels to the Condobine, which goes into the Darling River, and the, that side, down that end, flows into the Brisbane Valley, yeah, so this end down here into the Condamine and this end down here goes into the um, Brisbane Valley water system. So and you can walk in here a fair distance. Hopefully the camera's picking up. I've got my light on and there's a fair bit of an echo in here. We'll walk up to the gate up here and we'll show you in here. Hope you're enjoying. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, I'll leave a link in the description, hopefully where we are. So she's a fairly big gate they got here and uh, fairly well chained up and looks something sort of medieval. All the cobwebs all over it. I'll see if I can put the camera through there and show you what's in there, but all the bats are in between here and the other end, so it doesn't look like you can walk down the other end. My light just went flat on my camera. So, or it turned off one of the two. Must turn off after a few minutes. First time I've really used the light. So you can see any silhouette in the distance there. So we might head back out now and uh, Okay guys, we've walked back up from that end of the tunnel there now. I said I'd show you up here. It's a shame that one tree there is in the road because you cannot see the uh, opening of the tunnel there, but that's where we walked up through there and along the track over the back there. You can get up through here. Um, like I was saying down there in the tunnel, there's a bit of literature up here. Um, this is, like I said, down there, one of the, uh, it's the longest uh, man dug out tunnel uh, in Australia. It was, uh, and it was done in 13 months. 
So it has pretty good going um, on the sign here. It says that there was minimal blasting and uh, a few draft horses and uh, the railway engineer described the rock as easy digging. So I don't know whether we could do it today, but uh, they did it back then and uh, it's an amazing accomplishment to think this was all hand dug. So we'll head back up there now and we'll uh, show you that other end of that tunnel, eh? Cheers, guys. Okay, guys, we've walked back from the other end of the tunnel there, back through the park area there that we were looking at to start off with. And uh, here's the other part of, it says entry, exit that way. So we're gonna head down here and we'll have a look around. So there's a few steps on this end. So we decided to do the hard part last and do the easy part first. So we'll head down the steps. Winnie's having second thoughts about walking on steps. She doesn't like the look of them. It's so, that's, you know that so we'll probably have to carry her down. So you can see here, there's just a really good walkway. It's got a nice handrail. It's easy to walk on. Probably a lot harder to come up. And you can see down there, the other end of the tunnel, just down the side there. Now, there is a fair bit of water down here, as I said, because it, we've had a lot of rain around Kingaroy. We haven't been able to get away for weeks. And uh, when we have got away, like I was saying down there earlier, it was probably the worst night camping we've had in a long time. But uh, hopefully the sun will come out and uh, it'll fine up for the rest of the weekend. So once we get down the bottom here, I'll show you a little bit more of the tunnel down there. Jeez. Okay guys, made it down to the bottom off the walkway there. And uh, like I said, it's fairly wet down through here and slippery. I'll try not to fall over. But uh, there's the other end of the tunnel, 285 metres, and you can only walk about 15 metres up this end here. As I said, they've got um, bats all living in there and they're trying to keep them protected. So there is a fair bit of a smell here. It's probably from the bats. It's, uh, you, you can smell a lot uh, more pungent odour down this end than what you could up the other end. So, and it doesn't look like they sort of keep this end as good as the track up the other end. But it's uh, basically the same. But this is the other end. Um, you can, like I said, the walking track down that end's a lot better. But uh, you've got the other end of the tunnel here. And you can see Annie and Winnie down there. Annie's taking a photo of me and I'm taking a video of her. So, yeah, thanks very much, guys. You can see me dial again. I hope you enjoyed. Like always, if you've got any questions, queries or comments, leave them down below. And I'm looking at the ground too. And I'll get back to you. But, uh, you know, thanks for watching. Stay safe, be kind to each other, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, guys.
Hey guys, Steve here. Well, we're camping down the road here. Check out my other video on that place there, but just a kilometre up the road, um, there's this great railway tunnel that was built. Um, I'll have to go check the date out. Do any know what it is? Wait a sec, I'll be back. Blooper. Okay guys, we just found a little bit of history. There's an old uh, telegraph pole that would have run along the rail line here. Still got the old conductor on the top there. And uh, just swallowed a bug. 